Hi guys, um, I hope you guys are doing okay. Um, so in this video, I want to talk about Tanitin. I know I have previously uploaded a video on the same, but uh, I'm doing this video because recently uh, Tanitin introduced some changes uh, on how you can check um, a file for the similarity, okay? So I want to run you through the new system uh, so that um, it is easier for you to, to use it. So let's just get straight into it. So obviously the first thing you need to, to know is that to use Tanitin, you need to have an account, okay? So we have to an account to to So if you are a student, talk to your instructor uh, at a create an account, okay? So basically instructors, your admins, uh, they'll create an account for you uh, where you can submit uh, your your assignments, okay? Uh, but uh, if you're just a writer, uh, you can just uh, buy the, the logins from someone who has them, okay? So let's just go to Tanitin. So obviously you need some logins. At the moment, I'm using my account, uh, which you can see the email address and my login. So obviously, if you are buying one from someone, uh, they'll give you the, the login credentials to use. So just um, use the email provided and then you log in with the password, okay? So once you are logged in, you just need to identify an active class, okay? So uh, this account only has one active class, as you can see. Just confirm the status that it is, it is actually active. So once you identify an active class, uh, you just click on it. Sometimes you might find that the account does not have an active class, in which case it will ask you to enroll. So just contact your admin uh, uh, to enroll. If you already have, um, you already, uh, if you already enrolled to a class, you will just uh, basically uh, input the course codes and uh, some passwords to 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 log into to have an active class. So at this point, we just have this app class. So I'm going to click on it so that it takes me to the uh, assignment homepage. So this is the new change. Previously, uh, if you watch the video, I'll, uh, I'll drop the video in the description box, the previous video, you notice um, it's a little bit different, okay? So um, once you come to this page, you just need to identify a, an assignment that has not been used. You can see at this point, we have two assignments. Uh, hands one, helping hands one, uh, hands one, and helping hands two. Hands one has already been been used up. So once you use, once you submit a file for the first time, you can resubmit it up to three times. But beyond that, you need to wait for at least 24 hours for the report to be generated for you. So you can resubmit a file up to three times. Okay. So at this point, I think I've already resubmitted this the second time I was using this. So you can see there's a file here that I uh, submitted, it had 92% similarity. So again, if you don't understand how Tanitin works, just to remind you that Tanitin compares the file you submit uh, with what they have in their database, okay? So usually Tanitin is used by students, by school. So basically, they compare it with other student assignments and also with the uh, sources available uh, on the internet, okay? So it compares uh, what you submit with uh, whatever they have in their database and uh, computes and uh, gives you the output as a percentage. So 92% here, for instance, it basically means 92% of whatever I submitted in that document is appearing similar to what the website has in their database. So obviously, I need to change 92% of this document, okay? so. To submit a new file, uh, like I've said, just identify an assignment that hasn't been used up. Uh, these are the assignments. So we can see this one um, has not been used up. And again, depending on the account you're using, you might have more assignments here. Okay. So, but at this point, I only have two, uh, which one is already used up. So I'll, uh, I'm going to use the remaining one to demonstrate. So I'll just click submit. And... Um, Initially, you, you could, uh, one of the changes that initially you could write, uh, you could edit this field here, but you can see at this point, it's uh, sort of locked out. You can't edit it. So obviously the paper, the report generated will uh, have the name of the person uh, owning the account, okay, the, uh, the account owner. 
So the only thing is that you can edit is uh, the uh, submission title. So let, let's just name it sample, and then you're gonna choose from the PC the file you want to run. So let me just pick on um, this case study that I've previously written, and then I upload. So just give it a few seconds to load to process, and then it will ask you to confirm. Okay, confirm, and then from there uh, it will ask you to return to the assignment list. Okay. So it will ask you to go back to the assignment list. As you can see, uh, it is still processing. So what you can do at this point is just refresh the page or give it time uh, for it to finish processing and then you can now view the report. So let's just refresh and see. Yeah, so it has finished. You can see it is saying it has completed the process. So you can see it is saying 25% uh, plagiarism, okay? So basically 25% of that document is uh, plagiarized uh, and that is a problem. So to view uh, the, the report, just click view and then it will uh, open, it will launch this um, window where you can see uh, which parts of your document uh, has been uh, has been affected. As you can see, I think the entire first paragraph has been affected. So as always, uh, what you need to do at this stage is to open the original file in your PC and then you go to this paragraph that have been highlighted and then you refresh it or you paraphrase it, okay? So basically you need to paraphrase uh, every highlighted uh, part, be uh, it the red one, the other color, whatever color it is, not just the red parts alone, all the places that uh, you have any sort of highlighting uh, you need to, to go and paraphrase, okay? So if you need to download this report, uh, you, maybe if you want to send it to somebody, you just click on the download button here, okay? So I click on the download button, and again, the download button might uh, be appearing at different position depending on the browser you're using, okay? So just look for it, you'll see somewhere, the download button, just click download, and then remember to uh, download the current view, okay? So that is the simple step of using Tanitin. Uh, but I also need to remind you that uh, sometimes uh, the account you're using might uh, may not be, might have the repository settings uh, uh, activated, in which case uh, anything you submit will actually be added to the Tanitin database. So before you use the account, just confirm if it is a non-repository, uh, because uh, if you are using a repository uh, account, uh, it's likely that the document will end up being plagiarized 100%, because essentially you're asking Tanitin to record the document in their database. But in most cases, uh, when you're using this, we just want it to, to check. We are not yet submitting it. Okay, so I just wanna check before we submit, okay? So once again, I said you can easily resubmit the file once more to 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 count, to check the second time uh, after, me, after making the initial changes, you can submit up to three times, but beyond that, I believe uh, you need, you can, you can see the warning, resubmit your paper. Note that after three resubmissions, you need to wait 24 hours after submission to see new similarity report. So obviously you need to check that. Uh, Keep that in mind, okay? So you can resubmit. Now, another change is that uh, initially, Tanitin allowed us to delete the file, okay, from the database. Uh, in this new uh, system, there's no option for deleting, or at least for the best of my understanding. So for you to get rid of the document, to remove the document from your file, you can resubmit another fake document, okay, that will now replace that particular one, okay, from the, from the assignment list. So like in this case, uh, if I want to get rid of the initial document, which, which is still here, okay, which is still uh, recorded here, uh, I need to just hit submit. And then in this case, I'll just pick a different uh, fake document okay, to submit. So uh, earlier I was talking about uh, repository settings. Uh, sometimes you need to count, if the account is non uh, is a repository, you need to confirm uh, that it has indicated somewhere here that the file you'll be submitting will not be added to any repository. 
but in this case I'm using a non-repository account by default so I, didn't, I don't need to worry about that so obviously when you're buying a, an account or you know and you are signing up for one you can ask the instructor or the admin to create a non-repository account for you okay it just makes things a little bit easier okay so this one is by default non-repository so I don't need to worry about that but if it wasn't then I would have had to confirm the settings the repository settings to so just confirm that the file that I'm submitting will not be added to any database. So I'm going to resubmit another fake document to remove the initial one. So let me just resubmit the one uh, called instructions. Okay. So those are just the instructions for that assignment. So once I resubmit that, uh, it will replace the original file and uh, this is very important especially for uh, shared accounts because I understand some people might be sharing accounts and then maybe you don't want other people to to see the document or to download it so you need to submit another one to replace the existing file. So I think that is all for 2018. See you in the next video.